Former parole well, Joining system. me now is Andrew Tate. His videos have been viewed billions of times online, but he's been banned from pretty much every mainstream social media platform, including Twitter. Uh, Andrew Tate, uh, welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Um, your take on this, I think, is quite interesting because you've been a victim of being... Uh, if victim's the right word, but you've been removed from social media platforms for your opinions. Um, Elon Musk has dedicated himself, he says, to restoring free speech. Uh, do you think that's going to include you, for example? I don't think it matters if it includes me or not. I think what's important is that free speech is the number one weapon against absolute tyranny. And although you cannot have complete free speech because then conversations completely break down into asinine bro there has never been a better example of of banning someone and deplatforming someone working so well than andrew tate it's crazy okay it's crazy i mean he's so he's so changed he he's like a new man dude he, he he's so reformed insult fests I do like the idea of the changing of the guard when it comes to control over information. Is it possible, Andrew Tate, to actually police something like Twitter, to, to be a platform for genuine free speech? Or is it so toxic and tribal now that whatever happens, you know, before we had all the all people on the right screaming away that they were being no platformed and so on. Now you've got all the people on the left screaming that they're being no, uh, you know, diminished in some way. Uh, it's, it's very tribal, very toxic. Can Musk cut through that? And if so, how? Yeah, it's going to be extremely difficult. There's always going to be one group of people who are extremely unhappy. But I think that anybody who's perspicacious enough to understand the truth of what's been going on in the world recently will know that the left... What the fuck? Perspicacious? What the fuck does that even mean, dude? What? And their narratives have certainly been protected for a very long time. And the universe has swings and balances. And God often restores balance to the universe. And perhaps it might swing the other way for a while. I truthfully am a person who believes that all points of view are extremely important. Because as soon as you block points of view, you have absolute tyranny. And in a way, it's sort of self-defeating, isn't it? Because you carried on getting huge attention. It was interesting to me that when you came on the show, for example, we've had, I think, nearly 6 million people have viewed the whole interview that we did, which is a huge number of people, certainly far higher than watched it on conventional television. So you have a whole, you have a whole world out there online which operates... You can hear the feedback now. ...away from social media platforms. Yeah, uh... I've been very, very successful in spite of them, but not many people can do that. Uh, I, I'm in a pretty unique position. But yeah, that's why he's like on his hands and knees trying to get back to, to, to crawl back into relevancy as best as he can. I think that everybody needs a voice to a degree. And social media platforms are now the most important platforms on the planet. They control information and they influence real world decisions. And they influence people's perception of reality. The last few years of COVID have been a perfect example of what happens when you censor one side of the argument and you only allow one point of view to be purported by the matrix in and of itself. And that's how you end up in tyrannical situations. I think you were just discussing that, Piers. Yeah, and I think that's a perfectly valid point. You know, people have quite, I think, quite rightly held me to task over some of the positions I took during the COVID pandemic. Uh, notably, when the scientists said, as a definitive fact, that you, you couldn't transmit the virus if you had the vaccine, it turned out that wasn't true. And I based my observations on that supposed fact and said, right, well, in that case, if you refuse to be vaccinated, you shouldn't get the same rights as people who've been vaccinated. If, if it's true that if you're unjabbed, you can pass it on. It turned out, actually, there's not much difference whether you've been vaccinated or not. And at that point, I changed my mind. Uh, uh, but I, I felt that yeah, there were a lot of people who were being deplatformed from Twitter at the time for questioning the validity of scientific statements, and they would then be a complete U-turn. So I do think it was a very interesting period, actually, for testing what free speech it was means. Actually, it was actually worse than that. You're right, Piers, but it was actually worse than interesting because what happens is when you censor an entire side of the argument and only allowed one side of the argument to have a voice, you are changing reality in real time. You are shaping the world. The only reason that scam continued as long as it did and the only reason people didn't get to see their own parents get buried and the only reason people sat and missed cancer appointments 
because they were scared of the common cold was because they were censoring anybody who said anything contrary to the purported version of events that the mainstream media decided they want the entire world to swallow. It's beyond simply interesting and it's beyond simply uh, funny or coincidental. Yeah, they are I mean, I will, no, I, will, I will challenge you on one thing. It's not the common cold, right? Damn, they keep muting his ass, bro. COVID-19 has killed 6.6 .6 million people. It is one of the most deadly viruses, certainly, of our lifetime. So it wasn't the common cold, but I do think it is completely justified what? for people to say we should be more cautious, I think, about accepting during fast-moving pandemics the word of scientists as being sacrosanct because on a number of things, from the use of masks to the efficacy of vaccines and prevention... My man said... During a fucking pandemic that kills 6 million people, what we should be doing instead is, you know, more skeptical of scientists. <coughs> That's awesome. <coughs> like, this is why even Piers is a fucking idiot, okay? ...transmission, they did massive U-turns. I've read enough history books to know that the people who do the censoring are never the good guys. And they've been censoring a lot of arguments for a very long time in the name of good. They are weaponizing virtue, and it's always in the name of tyranny. Anybody who is out here trying to silence an entire side of an argument on any subject, whether it's COVID-19, immigration, anything else, they are the evil people who are out for absolute mind control of the populace. And they well, should I be certainly, I certainly agree. I certainly agree that I think the healthiest thing for any de democracy is for all views to be aired and debated. We seem to have lost the ability to debate. You know, when I interviewed you, yeah, we had a few fractious moments, but actually, I thought it was a pretty spirited debate between people who perhaps had, you know, preconceived views of each other. And I've got no problem interviewing you now about these because I think you have an interesting uh, take on this stuff. And that's the key to life. When you reach that level of adolescence in your mindset where you can't handle any point of view that is contrary to your own, then you're truly a broken person. And that's what the internet is purporting. It's very interesting you said about Twitter being tribal. There's a large contingent of people on Twitter who simply cannot handle reading an opinion which differs from their own. And that yeah. is a degree of immaturity that we do not need adults to be functioning with. Man, this is boring as fuck. Homie fell off big time. Okay. Uh, but also, he's trying to make a comeback real bad. And it seems like Jake Paul is going to let it happen. Which is great because you often don't have a... The, the, uh, you don't often have an opportunity to have two dudes, two dickheads go toe to toe. Where you're like, I don't give a fuck who wins. You know what I mean? I have no dog in this fight. Like, I'm... I hope it ends up in a draw. You know what I mean? Where, like, they both fucking... They both knock each other out. Like, it, it's literally the best. It, it's the best of both worlds. Tate loses. Jake Paul looks good. Jake Paul loses. Tate looks good. Like, literally, they both lose is probably the best scenario. It's awesome. I genuinely don't care. Like, I don't. It's awesome to me. The fact that Tate didn't get his nipple tattooed shows his character. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go beat them up, King. I don't think I can fight either of them. They are both... Uh, Jake Paul is a pretty fucking serious fighter, uh, especially now. And Andrew Tate already is a, a successful kickboxer. I don't know how well he can box. Because if they kickbox, Andrew Tate cooks Jake Paul. If they box box, um, I don't know. Tate might actually legitimately lose in that circumstance. But both of them would beat me up for sure. 